you have so many interesting stories and you're willing to sit down and talk to us for a little while. So we'll take the advantage of that. How's that? I love to do it. All right. T talk about the, the Dumoulis family and Mike in particular. Okay. When I was 12 years old, I lived on Varnum Avenue in Lowell, out on the outskirts. Yeah. I lived, my first 10 years of my life were on Gorham Street in Lowell, near the South Common. And because uh, there was a lot of crime in the area, my father decided to move out to the suburbs. We bought a farm for $1,000, and at that time, there were no windows in the house, and there was a, a dirt cellar. Oh, yeah. We fixed it up, yeah. but we made a chicken farm out of it. <laughs> So Titus Plumeritis became a chicken farmer at 12 <laughs> years of age. We'd kill the chickens on Friday. We'd dress them up Friday night. Yep. When I say dress them up, right. we'd pull the feathers off. We didn't dress them up right, for a right. prom or anything. You didn't put on a tie no, on no, no tie, no. <laughs> and on Saturday morning, I'd get on the bus in Varnum Avenue, and I'd tell a bus driver, when you get to that area in Lowell where the big clock is outside, I didn't know they called it, City Hall, but that's what it was. Okay, yeah. When you get to that big clock, would you please stop the bus? I gotta deliver these chickens to a store down the street. So the bus driver would stop at City Hall and I would get off carrying two shopping bags. <laughs> there were double bags because there were about four or five chickens in each bag and yeah. we had capons that weighed seven or eight pounds. So I'm lugging down the street anywhere from 30 to 40 pounds of chickens and I was just 12 years old. When I get over Dummer Street, now on Dummer Street from City Hall is probably two, two and a half football fields, maybe 250 yards. When I get about 15 yards, one 15 yard penalty, <laughs> close to the doorway, Mike Demoulis would come out of the store and help me carry those, those two bags in. <laughs> And he would take and he'd dump them. They had a big scale, they hang from the ceiling. Yeah, and he'd yeah. dump the chickens in the scale and he'd weigh them and he'd write a number on a piece of paper and hand it to me. And he'd say to me, go to the barber shop and give this to your father and have him come back Monday morning. When I sell the chickens, I'll pay him for them. Yeah, yeah. And that was our first sale of chickens way back when I was a chicken farmer. Now throughout the years, time flew. I went through high school, I became a football player, and I got to know Mike quite well because he came to all my football games. Oh, really? wow. Mike was a, a loyal supporter because in those days, our football team played on Sundays. And Mike wasn't open on Sundays. Today they're open seven days a week. Mm. Yeah, right he, right. he came to the games, and they used to come over to me when I had a good game, and he'd be at the little tunnel when you're coming off the field, and he'd say, good game, Titus. You carried the ball much faster today, and you carried <laughs> those bags of chickens. <laughs> That's cute. That's true. So talk a little bit more about Mike, his personality and... Uh, Mike had a great he's... personality. And I tell you this is, after I went to chiropractic college, he actually went to one of my football games in Boston too. Yeah. Because he touched me so many times throughout my life. I'm talking about selling chickens to him. Then I'm talking about him coming to my high school games. Then I'm talking about him coming to my college games. Yeah. And then going to chiropractic college and coming back and having me walk in the store. And every time I bump in, because he was a Roma. Yeah. He never stayed in one store. They, by then, they had a chain of stores. Right. And he would see me come into one of the stores on Bridge Street or on uh, uh, Roger Street. And as soon as he see me, he come over to me and say, how is Dr. Titus Plummer right us today? <laughs> he was so proud. Oh, that's great. He, he was like my big brother. Yeah. He was so proud of me. And he, he just felt that he wanted to be sure I got that title. Well, let's talk about the Basharas. Joey Bashara, Bishop's Restaurant. I went there when they had just a little lunch cart type of thing. Yeah. And when they opened the new restaurant, Joey uh, became like a another member of my family. He's been to my 80th anniversary party, my wife's 80th birthday party, and we have Christmas 
a, a, a nice picture of him in my book yeah. on Christmas Day when the kids were all little. He knows all the kids by name. He came to my son when my son was in the All-Star game. Joey and I were on the middle of the football field with Coach Riddick uh, celebrating the victory. So Joey goes back and he's considered a member of my family and we, we're great friends. We play golf now uh, probably two or three times a week during the season. Uh, we belong to the same country club at Vespa. And I can't say enough good things about Joe and his, his brother Abe. Actually, I have the boathouse is in my book also. Mm -hmm. Abe, uh, he certainly deserved it. And he's, they're so generous. And they don't want notoriety. Right. Just like Mike the Right. You never know. Mike is so generous. And he donates to, donates to so many different charities. And he always says, please don't mention my name. I understand that you were a welterweight fighter. Is, is that right? I fought in the Golden Gloves in Lowell. Yeah. And I was a, an undefeated welterweight champion in a novice division. I had one fight, and I won by a knockout. But I got the hell kicked out of me. He, the guy I was <laughs> fighting came from Worcester. He was about six foot two. He had a big reach on me. And Titus, not being afraid of anyone bigger than him or taller than him, all I was concerned with was landing my right hand. And I hit yeah. him five times in three rounds, and every time I hit him, he went down. Yeah. So I won by a technical knockout. And the coach, my friend, Coach Riddick, who was also my oh, patient, really? he was a good friend of mine. He was my very first patient. He said to me, Titus, after I was declared the champ, they put it on the front page of the Little Sun. It's in my book also. He said, Titus, before you get killed, quit. <laughs> Stick the football. <laughs> so you're fixing bones as opposed to breaking bones nowadays. That's correct. <laughs> okay. That's a good pun. I like it. Another thing we're going to talk about is Kurt Gowdy. Kurt Gowdy, you know, Kurt Gowdy was the announcer of the Boston Red Sox and Boston University because we played all our home games in Fenway Park at that time. And I remember one day when I got home, I made my debut because Buffdinelli assigned me as the place kicker. I beat Harry Gannis out for place kicking because he was the place kicker. Yeah. And Buffdinelli said, because as a freshman, freshman could not play varsity ball in that time. And I had 21 consecutive point afters as a freshman, didn't miss one. And so Buffdinelli said to me, Titus, you're our place kicker. So Harry Gannis was the holder then. Yeah. I kicked the ball out of his hands twice because <laughs> he couldn't get it down quick enough. So Buff Danelli said, before you break his hands, I'm going to get someone else to hold. <laughs> but Kurt Gowdy, anyway, I made my debut against Syracuse. And when I got home, my friends were all telling me, Titus, you should have heard Kurt Gowdy. When you came on the field, he said, and here comes Titus Plumeritis. Oh, he got his cookies off saying that. <laughs> That's great. So one day, yeah. I went to make up. I became a Rotarian. This is after I'm a chiropractor. I'm a Rotarian in Lowell. And they had a lot of these uh, makeup rules. They, they all wanted to be have perfect attendance. Mm -hmm. So I'm making up in Lawrence. And where do you think they made up? At Bisharab's, Bishop's oh, Restaurant. Oh, really? Oh, great, great. Bishop's Restaurant. So I went in there one day to make up, <laughs> and I recognized Kurt Gowdy sitting over there. Yeah. I walked over to him and I said, Kurt, you probably don't remember me, but I remember you. And he stood up and he said, how the F could I forget Titus Plummer writers? <laughs>